Hey everyone, Ollie here from Battle Kiwi. Just going to show you a quick little tutorial on how to customize your battle box lid and dials. Uh, to do this, we're going to be using Tinkercad. So, first thing we need to do is make sure you've got a little account and you're signed in, and then we're going to go to create your first 3D design. And then here we have our work plane. Um, there's a bunch of like basic block tools over here. We don't need that, so we can just click the little arrow to hide that. If we're on the over on the box here, we can click and hold and rotate our view here. The mouse wheel, we can scroll in, scroll out. Uh, we can also use the right mouse button to click and hold and also rotate. Or if we're zoomed in, oops, if we're zoomed in middle mouse button to click and hold and we can move the work plane around. So what we're going to work on first is customizing one of our lids. So what we want to do is go up here to import and we're going to choose a file. Show all files. Just navigate to wherever you've saved your files to. We've got a couple of blank options that we've included. There's the completely blank STL and we've also got the one with the rivet design, which also has the blank area for putting a custom area in there. Um, we're gonna use this one for this uh, tutorial. We're gonna open that up. Don't wanna to touch anything here. We wanna make sure it's at 100% and import. Once this is brought in, now we can see our file here and we can now see that's all fully loaded in. Now you might notice that the, the work plane defaults to being, I think it's 200. Um, if that's too, if you don't like that, um, like that, we can just go down to settings here and we can change the width. I'll just pump that up to 300. Close settings and there we've got the larger work area. Um, next thing we need to do is we need an image that we want to put on here. So I'm just going to go, I've got no little tab here open. So we're going here, I'm just going to grab this Amiga symbol. I'm just going to save this image. What we need to do now is we need to change this into an SVG format rather than a JPEG or a PNG. Um, so you can just use a completely free converter. You can just type into Google, convert to SVG. There's a whole bunch of different options. I'm just going to grab, use the, this picksvg.com, upload my file. This is the downloaded Amiga symbol I just got. Oops, add blocker. Hide that away. Okay, when that's uploaded, um, we've got some options here we can do. You can see it's this here, it's defaulted to Edge. Uh, so that's the original. This is what it's converting it to. Um, this is taken the outline, um, but I want more of a block fill. Uh, so I'm just going to go up here to filter and I'll go with internal. And there we can see now I've got a block icon. I'm going to download the SVG, download complete, and I'm going to go back to Tinkercad. And again, we want to go to import. And you'll see here that Tinkercad supports STL. OBG and SVG, or OBJ, sorry, and SVG, which is what we are trying to, wanting to import. I'm going to choose our file. There it is. Um, now, when it first comes in, it comes in, they're probably quite large. We want to make this quite a bit smaller. I'm just going to drop this down to like 40%. If I click into the dimensions, you'll see the numbers change. Still probably going to be quite big, but that'll get us started. At least it won't be off the artboard. As you can see, that's brought that in. Um, Spinning it around, you can see that's just sitting directly on top of the lid, which is cool. Now, something we want to pay attention to is the orientation of the icon we're putting on there. This is the rail system, so this is sliding into the box. So for me, I like to think of the thicker end as being the bottom and the rail end as being the top, as in 
when we have it on our box and we're sliding it off, this is the way that it's facing us. Uh, we don't want to be misplacing it onto the box the wrong way round because it could be mistaken for another icon from something else. <coughs> Hands up. Um, right, so as you can see, it's very easy to manoeuvre things around. When we click on the object we've just placed in, we've got some little arrows here which we can rotate it around. Or on this other end, we've got one that can rotate it this way, but we don't want to do that. We want to just place this on. So all I'm going to do here, size it. You can see I can just grab the corner here. Now when I grab this corner and I'm holding my mouse button down and resizing, but you see I can actually distort it in all directions. So if we want to stop that happening and keep it scaling nicely, just want to hold the shift key down on the keyboard. And in that way, when we drag it in and out, it keeps it all nicely to scale. Uh, now, a couple of other things we've got on here that we can adjust. Um, we have this drop there. And if we click on that and hold that, um, I can lift the design up. If I spin that around, you can see I've lifted that off, off of the surface, which is not something we want to do now. So I'm just going to undo that. Uh, the other thing we have is this little square here. And with this one, I can lift the whole design, embossing it further off of the surface or pulling it right down. Now that we have that there, we can see we're not quite in the middle. Um, so we can just click on that and we can move it around. Or we can shift and click so that both items are selected. And then we can use the Align button. Now I've clicked the Align button up here, and then now you'll see there's these little dots appear. So if I click this black one here in the middle, that'll align it centrally that way. And if I click this one, it'll align it centrally this way. Um, but because of the design with the rivets, and we have this here, this rivet area is not in the middle, so I'm going to click back on this. I'm going to unclick a line so that's not there anymore. Click back on this and we just want to slide this upwards a little way. So to do this we can just click and hold on the actual icon itself and we're just going to drag it up just a bit until it looks nicely central. And there we go. So if I spin the design around a bit, you can see now that we have this nicely in the middle and we have it embossed there. And again, if we want to change the embossed amount, we just click on the icon and we can click on the little thing here. Now you'll see that it says that it's embossed 7 mil. Um, that's fine for this because it's just coming off of the flat surface underneath here. Um, what we want to make sure is that it's not coming out down below because obviously that could be uh, an issue when we come to print and it's not something we want. So if we go up you can see it disappears in there. Don't need to worry too much about this because when we export it it's just going to come out as a solid file. Once we want to export this we just go up to export and we want to export it for 3D printing. So we want to export it as an SDL. Preparing model for export. Uh, and there we go, that downloads it. It goes straight into your downloads. Uh, so we can show that in the folder. And here we have it in our downloads. Now we have our lid, oh, I can't click on it because it's uh, in the recording thingy um, but yeah so there you can see we have our lid with the Amiga symbol on ready to import into your slicer. So next we're going to look at how to do your dials um, so we're just going to um, I'm just going to delete this for now um, normally you could just go back um, and it would save it into your own files already for you leave that here for now because we're going to use that to customize the dials as well 
So next thing we need to do, obviously, is bring in our dial. We need to import, choose a file. Navigate to our dials. And I'm just gonna start with the dial blank large. And bring that in. Again, leave this at 100%. We don't wanna change the size of that. And there we go, now we've got our blank dot. So, we've got a few things to do here. If I spin around, you can see the, the dial itself is onto the work surface, whereas the Omega symbol is floating around and also way too large. So, how do we get that onto here? Because if I just click here now, you'll see it just floats around on the wrong plane. So, what we do for that is, while we have this selected, I'm going to go up to Cruise, this magnet here, click on that, click on the um, little button there. As I move this around, and as that comes over the surface, you'll see, bam, there we go, it's jumped up onto being on the surface that I've cruised over. So now that it's there, we can resize it. Again, remember, shift, click, resize. Shift click, just resize it. Oh no, it's the wrong way around again. So we're going to go to our little arrows, spin it around to omega it up rather than ultra it up. Um, now with this one, as opposed to on the box where we wanted to emboss it and bring the symbol up on the surface, on the dials we need to cut it in or like engrave it, deboss it into the dial itself. In order to do this, what we're going to do is click onto our icon. We're going to change this to whole instead of solid because we're going to use it to cut into the dial. Next, we want to choose how deep we want to deboss this. Um, so what we can do is just click on the little drop icon here. Now when I click and hold, I can drag down and you can see it's clicking to one mil increments. Um, so I could do one mil, or if we want to change the amount that it's cutting in, you can also, you see while the dialog box is there, I can actually click into this and set the amount that I want. So I'm going to go minus 0.5. 75 so just a bit less than a mil and then hit enter now what we need to do is actually use this shape to cut into this so this is already selected I'm now going to shift click the dial and then go up to group click group and there we go it's cut it out of the dial and if I scroll around pan around you can see that's nicely chopped out and ready to save and print. So now this debossing is uh, exactly the same. You could do this on the lid as well if you prefer the deboss look. So again, to save this, we go up to export, SDL, and that'll save it off to your downloads. So just to show you those completed SDLs, I've jumped over into, the, into my slicer, and we're gonna import those files just so we can have a quick look at them. Probably going to want to rename them so they mean something more than the random names that Tinkercad puts on there. Open up the lid and there we go. You can see our lid here with the Omega symbol on there. Um, now you do want to note when you bring it in, um, check if there's a little symbol there. Um, just to get that order of pair because sometimes depending on what you've brought in there might be um, might be some little artifacts um, so we can just right click and get that auto fixed up cool and then we'll chuck in the, the little dial as well so we can have a look at that as well and there we have our dial which is also looking great and ready to print Gonna get rid of that. Um, and there we have our dial, ready to go. Obviously with the dial, we wanna make sure when we're printing these that we place the top down. 
um, and make the multiples as you need for your mission command or the wound trackers. Awesome. Have fun, everyone. I'm um, looking forward to seeing your customized battle boxes and what you come up with. Cheers.